Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy and in my channel I talk about plants and my life and journey with my plants. Today I'm doing my top 10 Hoyas, uh, my favorite Hoyas of the month video. Again, I'm excited to be making this video today and it's actually pretty sunny outside. So after I make this video, I'm going to grab Wolfie and we're going to go to the playground and get some good vitamin D from the sun. Okay, so Let's just get started. I think I've actually grabbed 11 Hoyas today. The first Hoya I want to show you guys that's been really um, making me happy this month is my Hoya Australis, just Hoya Australis. I always um, want to say Australis Lisa, but no. This is her and I have come a long way with this one. So as you can see, she's got um, like this whole cluster of leaves were new leaves and then she's got a couple of new leaves that she's working on right here and then on the top over here there's another new set of leaves yeah you know i've had the australis lisa i feel like from the very beginning of uh, not australis lisa australis from the very beginning of me collecting hoyas it looks like it's really easy to grow and a lot of people say theirs just grows really quickly like a weed, but I have never had that experience. It just doesn't really grow for me. And every time I try to put out a new leaf, it will yellow and just drop. So because it hasn't been growing, so I've been just kind of putting it in the corner of my windowsill and I just wasn't really looking at it for, for months. And, and whenever I would water all the plants on the windowsill and I'll just water this one. I think it was maybe a month ago when I went to like really take a good look at this plant and it was just covered in scale. It was so disgusting. And there was like uh, a little like a mealybug here and a mealybug there. So it was just like, because I wasn't looking at it and checking on it because it wasn't doing anything. So it was super neglected and it was just like infested with bugs. It was so terrible. I'm not gonna insert a photo for you guys to see, but if you guys want to see it, send me a private message on Instagram. I'll show, show you the photo. But it was really gross. Um, but then all, at the same time, it also had like these multiple like new growths that it was doing. So I took it to the sink and I gave it like a really good thorough treatment. And I've been paying attention and I haven't seen anything come back yet. After I make this video, I'm going to, again, like treat it once more. And yeah, so when, when you treat pests, like even though you could take care of like the, oh, the visible ones. Um, there will still be like residue of like eggs and they will take like a few treatments of like um, getting rid of all those things before your plant is kind of out of the woods for a while. Even though it was under attack, it finally started to grow. And I really do love the shape of the plant and how glossy it is. I think it's really gorgeous. Yeah, there it is. So I'll put this one aside and uh, I'm going to treat that one. And speaking of scale, there was another plant that had like quite a significant scale uh, infestation. I decided to up pot, to take, take the whole plant out of the pot and treat each strand of the plant, um, like wash it and really like spray it down. And I even like cut out all the roots with the residue like soil mixture in it and then I'm just repotting it in pond. So this one too, I need to like stay on top of it and it's actually currently rerooting. I don't think it's rerooted just yet, but I really like how it looks in the pond and like, like how full it looks once it's in like a smaller pot. I just, I'm really enjoying it. So I wanted to show you guys this plant. This is uh, the Hoya Fichii. Yeah, it's not the prettiest plant there's a lot of like damaged leaves but yeah this plant has also gone through a lot um but i just i it, the leaves are so beautiful and it there's a the venation is really gorgeous but anyways i really like how it looks right now um and just currently rerooting and i am going to treat it after this video as well just like uh as like a follow-up treatment with the australis I hope you guys are not judging me for uh, the, the pest issues that I have. Who doesn't have any pests? Let me know. And what do you do? Also, please let me know. Um, so this is the plant. So these were the old leaves 
but this is the new leaf that has grown out and it's so, I love, it is just so gigantic. Underneath, this is a new leaf too. Uh, yeah, I really adore it. I think it's really gorgeous. And also this plant, when I first received it, it had root rot, so I had to reroot it. And then after I potted it, I rerooted it in sphagnum moss. And I think I, re I potted it up in like a soil mixture and it quickly had root rot. And then I had to reroot it again in sphagnum moss. So after that, I just don't feel comfortable planting it in anything but sphagnum moss. It seems every time it's in a sphagnum moss um, medium, it stays alive and it's put out this huge leaf. Um, and every time I try to grow it in something else, it, it dies. I think that happened maybe twice um, because I've had this for a while now. So, so yeah, right now I'm just happy that it's back to being alive and it's put out two beautiful leaves. That's the third one. Uh, the fourth one I want to show you is um, this Hoya Merillia Mer long leaf that I had recently imported. Just want to see. And I rooted it in pond. You see it? And since after it was rooted, I put it under my Mars Hydro grow light to give it a sun stress. I find that particular light uh, sun stresses Hoyas really well. And yeah, I just think it looks so, so cute. Although between this one and the regular Marilia, I think I still prefer the regular one because it's like meatier and rounder. Um, but yeah, but this one is like dainty and really adorable and elegant and beautiful. The fourth one I want to show you guys, this one I actually, I grew it really well in sphagnum moss and then I feel like it was time to give it a bigger pot. I took the whole thing like with the sphagnum moss and the roots and I didn't tease out the sphagnum moss and I tried to plant it into my like soil mixture. But I noticed that the roots were just not going into the soil mixture and I just feel like it didn't really like the situation it was in. So I kind of did something really daring. I just cut off all its roots. You, you guys know I do this, but for this particular plant, I feel like it was kind of daring because it's a um, bit of a fussier plant, F fussier plant, yeah. But I, anyways, I cut off all the roots and I'm rerooting it in pond. And it seems to be rerooting because it's been a while now and the leaves are still quite firm. Yeah, it's not getting wrinkly, so I think it is uh, adapting. This, this Hoya, I think it prefers to be not like super dry, actually. I used sphagnum moss to rescue it like two years ago when it was not doing well. Or two years ago? Yeah, or a year and a half ago. So sphagnum moss kind of rescued it. And I think because of that exper experience, I think it likes a little bit more like moist environment. Anyway, so I think pond should do it for this one. And it is really firm, so I'm happy about that. It's just so pretty. I have shown you guys this plant so many times. And look, check this out. Like as it's rerooting, it's um, flowering again. This peduncle has um, flowered many times. It's, uh, it's like a super long peduncle. So, but I really like when the flower buds come out and it's like round like this, it's so cute. Yeah, I hope it does bloom. If it does, I'll show you guys again, even though I know you have already seen it many times of this, this plant flowering. That's this plant. I really love it and I think it's really beautiful. I maybe, I don't know if I should change the, how close it is to the light because I really love when other people show theirs and it's like dark and glossy and beautiful. But because mine gets so much like, so much light, it's just like always blushing. I may try to play around with the lighting a little bit, but yeah, it's super beautiful and I love, I love that one veiny and heart shape. The next one I want to show you guys, uh, maybe I'll just not say its name and I, you can just read it on the screen because I feel like I'm definitely going to butcher, butcher it. And this one has been on my list before and it hasn't put out any new leaves. It's just the last time I was showing you guys because it was like blushing kind of pink and it has since like sun stress even more and I just think it's so beautiful. I just look at it all the time. And this is the... Well, I'm going to try to say it. Hoya Pseudo Littoralis. <laughs> there you go. She is so gorgeous. 
There is another Hoya that looks kind of like this. Um, what is it called? Hoya NS05-055. They look super similar. I don't know if they're the same, but I love this one so much anyway, so I wouldn't mind if it's like the same Hoya. If it's not, yeah, I just really admire that Hoya after seeing my friend Mom and Plants on her Instagram. Uh, seeing a picture of that one. So I'm gonna try to grow that one out. And I'll show you guys that Hoya once it's arrived. I think it should be on its way. Um, okay, that's already, I don't know how many now, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six left. Uh, this one I got from Hoya, etc. And you've seen this a few times already too. This is the Hoya Russell. I just love like how it tanned, it's like incredible. The reason why I got it was because I knew it was able to tan. So anyway, so after it's rooted, it, once again, I placed it under the Mars Hydro Grow Tan and, and then very quickly after it just turned into this like browns, like even color, like red color leaf. It's so beautiful. And I've always wondered if Tending a Hoya is gonna stun its growth. I think maybe, um, but this one has, I don't know if you can see a little growth point poking out. It's so precious to see like a growth point poke out from like the woody part of the stem. Yeah, it just feels like, almost feels like a miracle. But yeah, anyways, I'm just so happy with this one and I can't wait to see what the new leaves will look like. Um, yeah, if they're gonna be as big as, and glossy as these original leaves that I got. The next one I want to show you is the Hoya Silver Dollar um, that I won in a giveaway from Hoya, etc. Um, so I posted it the other day on Instagram. I have gotten it, maybe it's just been, maybe just short of two weeks. And it started, you can see a little bit of, of the roots right here. And I was like posting, oh, and a little bit of roots over here. So I was posting that on Instagram in a little video of like just turning this plant around to show people. And one of my friends on Instagram noticed that on the top, it's barely visible actually. You can see a little bit of the, uh, something is working over here. It's like trying to poke out. So that would be really, really exciting if I get some new growth um, in the near future. I was just really excited to see root growth. I'm actually going to like, if you can see, the stem is super long, but if you can see there's a little bit of like aerial root trying to like get into the pond, I think I'm going to put a little bit of more pond on the top to cover this, to encourage that root to grow as well to support the plant. But yeah, I'm just so happy with this guy. Just be rooting and growing, um, and I can't wait for it to be a bigger beauty. The next plant I want to show you, this plant had root rot. So I took off all its roots and I have been trying to re-root re it in pond, but it was just like wrinkly for such a long time and I just wasn't sure if it was gonna re-root and become healthy again. But thing last week that I noticed, the leaves are finally plumping back up and it, we're back on. So it's being back alive again. I'm so happy about that because I love this plant. This is the Hoya Bretonia that I got from the Hoya shop. Sorry, I feel like the camera is trying to like focus on my face because you can kind of see my face in the trellis. Um, but yeah, you can see like the leaves are plumping up again. They're, it was just so sad and wrinkly for so long. Every time I look at it, I just feel bad and not sure if I was gonna lose this plant. So yeah, I'm really, really happy to have it back. And it's just such an adorable small leaf Hoya. There you go. Yeah, and if you guys haven't noticed, I really enjoy using pond. And originally I was a little bit resistant because I kind of feel like, you know, plants need like organic material, but we do, I do have some like orchid bark in my DIY pond mixture. Uh, but I was a little bit resistant toward the idea of just growing it in 
without soil. But then the other day I was watching, I was just like looking up for Hoya videos and this girl in Asia, she, she was like showing uh, Hoyas growing in the mountain and you could just see it like climbing on top on the side of a rock. And the roots were just kind of like embedded, uh, clawed onto the rock. And seeing that video kind of made me feel even more convinced that uh, Hoyas can grow well in, in Pond and in Leka. So I don't need to be so religious about using soil. So this Hoya, you guys have seen in my, I think, um, Ikea cabinet like tour video. And back then it was just like a tiny little one that was coming out and I was so excited about it because I knew it was gonna be a beautiful like leaf growing process for this particular Hoya because of like the venation and like when it's new, it was like a little bit pinker. And sure enough, like every stage of this leaves new growth, I have been so just blown away by how beautiful it is. Like the other morning I was checking on it and Jordan was working in his office. I actually like just grabbed his Hoya and when, when it interrupted him, he was writing something. I was like, don't you think this is so beautiful? And I think he was a little bit annoyed by my interruption, but he was like, yeah. Anyway, so this is the Hoya CVN. And this is the new leaf that I have been just like marveling. It has lost a lot of the pinkish color, um, but it's still just so stunning. Yeah, I, uh, I am really loving this, this particular Hoya. I, there, I have a lot of veiny Hoyas, but this particular venation has been really, um, it's been capturing my attention a lot. I got this from Happy Planting. Ooh, yeah. There you go. So that's that one. And the next one I want to show you, this Hoya hasn't grown, but um, I don't know. I feel like it's just resting. And then I'm just gonna wait for it to like decide to grow. So I'm not, you know, I'm not like being impatient with it, but lately I've placed it under a grow light and it has been like, turning pink and it's just so, the way it blushes is just so cute. And the Hoya I'm talking about is the Hoya New Guinea Ghost. I want to show you like, this leaf is super tiny, but it's just so pink. And then like this tiny leaf is just, won't do it, there you go, so cute. And then I'm seeing it like, all the rest of the leaves getting a little bit of blush too. So, oh, yeah, I'm really liking that. It's like a very gentle little pink instead of like really intense, like saturated color. Right now it's just like this little bit of pink. It's just so pretty. I don't know, this Hoya has just been really amazing. My brother gave me a cutting and it was really easy to root. And uh, I, so I took a cutting out of that cutting and planted it back in. But uh, yeah, it hasn't put out any new leaves for me for a while now but the roots look good and yeah, I'm just really loving this plant. And the last one, like the 11th plant is a Hoya Mini Bell Splash. Is it focusing? Look at that. It's so stunning. And the rest of the uh, leaves are really splashy too. I asked the seller for um, care tips and she just said like nothing special. This one grows really well. So I have the green mini bell and that is my experience. It grows really, really well. Um, but I do have a problem of giving it too much light and then like bleaching out the dark, beautiful, glossy color. I did the same thing with my Hoya Wilbur Graves. I thought like giving it lots of light will encourage the like splashiness to be there. But instead I kind of just made the darker color parts of the leaves like a little bit washed out. And I don't want to do that with, with this Hoya. Like the half of the appeal of having a super splashy Hoya is like the dark contrast uh, in the leaves, right? So, so yeah, I need to be mindful of like giving it enough light, but not too much to like lose that dark green color if you know what I mean. And if you have any tips, please let me know how you do it. I have heard just so many different theories about um, giving 
like having splashy leaves, I'm still finding my way around this uh, particular type of look of Hoyas. Anyway, those are all the Hoyas. Can you believe that during the filming of this video, I ran downstairs maybe like four or five times to tend to Wolfie's different needs. Anyway, so I'm going to um, say goodbye now and just to focus my morning on Wolfie and then I'll edit this afternoon and hopefully upload this video for tomorrow morning. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. As usual, please let me know which one um, of these Hoyas really like caught your eye. Is that the saying, caught your eye? And again, like I really appreciate every time you comment, I, I, it makes me feel like I am part of your community. I appreciate your thoughtful comments. So thank you so much. And I will see you guys soon again. Bye. Hi, Alev. Alev. Alev, did you make the video with me? Did you? Say bye. Bye.